All right, sourdough flatbread. If you're new to sourdough, flatbread's incredible. You can use it for everything. Um, we're gonna jump right in. I like to warm up the water to at least above 80 degrees, depending on how warm it is in the house. So go ahead and put that in there. And that's 600 grams of water. Then I'm gonna tear that and then we got the starter. Now, if you guys don't know how to make one of these, I got a great video on it. Go ahead and watch that after this video. But create a starter, you can see where I started here. And it's already over doubled. You wanna get it when it's on the rise too. It's just a much better starter. And here we're gonna have 250 grams of starter. Now guys, you can mix this by hand, but this is such a uh, big batch that I use a mixer. But if you have an anchor shrimp, man, those things, these things work really slick for, for bread. I like, to, I like to incorporate it right now as best as possible, kind of mix that around. You guys, if you don't have a scale, you really need a scale when you're doing a sourdough. Uh, now I do extra virgin olive oil, and I need, let's see, 60 grams of that. Now at this stage, I like to measure out my salt. For one, because I don't want to forget it. Like I've forgot salt before and that's no fun. So here we got 30 grams of salt. Some people put it in at this stage, I do not. I like, kind of like the starter to do its thing with the flour and stuff before I actually add the salt. And now we go ahead and add the flour. So this is a low hydration. Um, flatbread so but it is still a little a little high it's 69% so we're gonna tear this out I like to add a whole wheat flour just gives it a little extra punch so we're gonna do there's a total thousand grams of flour so we're gonna do 200 of just the wheat 790 of white now, if you're doing this in a KitchenAid, which I've done before, it's almost a little bit much for that mixer. Not for this, this mixer, but a uh, KitchenAid, it's a little much. And guys, I'll leave the full measurements for the recipe in the description. And then I don't put it on the mixer yet. I'm just gonna incorporate all this and get it like a shaggy dough and then cover it. And I let it sit for about 30 minutes. That way, all the flour really absorbs all the water, oil into it before I start the mixing process. We have extras we put in the freezer and you can make a pizza out of them real quick. They're really easy to freeze and uh, unthaw. They make great wraps for sandwiches, um, you name it, a form of a flat bread. As you can see there, it's just a shaggy mix. And it's just kind of getting everything together and incorporated. And if you don't have one of these, you want one of these little bonnets, they sell them at the store. But that simply just keeps that moisture in and let's let it sit for about a half hour. All right, it's been about 20 minutes and it looks good. It looks like the flour absorbed a lot of that water. So we're gonna go ahead and mix it and add the salt. I like to add a little bit on top here first. Now guys, if you don't have a mixer, you can obviously do this by hand. I should have a video coming out showing you how to do uh, mix a bread ball or dough ball by hand. But right now, all we're trying to do is help build a little bit of the gluten structure. And that salt's gonna help that. And then once we get the salt incorporated, we're gonna let it sit like another 10 minutes. And it just really helps it quickly become to a structure where what they describe as a window pane, where you can kind of pull a window pane in that dough. These mixtures are so cool because they're just so wide open right here. All right, we're back on. The salt got to uh, do its thing for a minute. Now, with this type of mixer, what I'm looking for is that ball to get really smooth in there. Um, that's giving me a good sign that I'm getting close. If you guys are using a um, KitchenAid with the dough hook, once that bowl starts to get really clean, that's another good sign that you're getting close to your dough. Um, this has a scraper in it. So it kind of does that itself. If you're doing this by hand, usually you start telling it's starting to change when it's not as sticky on your hands. Um, 
And, you know, sourdough is one of those things you just, the more and more you do it, the better you know what your dough needs. All right, it's been like three minutes. Get a little olive oil on your fingers. It helps grab the dough. But as you grab this, as you can see, it kind of tears. That means you're not, you're really not there yet. So just keep going. All right, the mixing is done. The gluten is starting to really build in this dough ball. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go do like the proofing of this dough, um, which I like to do a couple stretch and folds. Depending on how well the dough develops is you know how many stretch and folds you need to do. All right, get a little olive oil on your hands. Kind of helps grab this dough. And also, I get a bowl, and this is what it's gonna proof in. And I like to put a light coat of olive oil on the bottom of this dish. So I like to get that ball kind of together in here. You can get it out all in one piece. And then I'll kind of like fold it into itself a little. You can see how the gluten's kind of built already on this. And it's not totally falling apart. And then that's it for the first step. You're just gonna leave it in there like that. And we're gonna proof it for about 35, 45 minutes, no more than an hour. And it's gonna rest in there. And then we're gonna give it a good stretch. And then depending on now how that stretch is, we'll kind of determine um, if we wanna do another stretch before we let it proof overnight. Yeah, you know, one tip is if you have one of these types of bowls, you can warm it up. So get it a little bit warm, it kind of helps keep everything warm. Like we warm the water, you can warm your container that you're mixing in. Keep everything nice and warm because everything takes a little bit longer with the sourdough if you're new to this. Put that little bonnet on there, you gotta keep the moisture in there. And if you have a Breville oven, like a lot of my fans, you can put it right in here and there's a proofing function. And that just keeps it, I like to keep it like 85. And then I come back and visit it in about 45 minutes. All right, 40 minutes in, as you can see, that has relaxed in there. Started to fill the bowl a little more. Now what we want to do is a quick stretch, right? So get a little oil on your hands. And on your dough scraper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around this bowl. So first, I kind of loosen it up like that around the whole edge, all right? Then I grab one side, pull it up, and stretch it. Now you can see how gluten-y it is, and it's still holding. Fold it back in, go to another side. You're really, re you're turning it like four times. Stretch, okay? That olive oil really helps grab this and it doesn't stick to your hands. So that's three folds and then number four. And you can see you can't really pull it as much anymore. Okay. Then I like to just kind of pull it into itself like this. So now you got to decide if that's got enough gluten structure in it and if you think it's going to be good. but. To me, that window pane test is good. It's stretching enough um, that I think this dough is ready to do the last proof. If it wasn't, what I would do is go another 40 minutes and do another stretch. So if you go to stretch and it kind of falls apart, you know you're gonna have to do another one. So what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna turn it in on itself and that just kind of Gives it, um, like it'll trap a little more air in this dough. And it'll give it a better chance to develop. So all I am is doing is working the bottom into itself and I'm just making the dough tighter. And you can see there, dough is really tight. Now the goal is we want this ball to double in size. That's the end goal here. Before we divide them up into the individual flatbreads. So I'm gonna let this proof in the 
proof for, for probably another two hours, and then it's gonna go in the fridge. So if it proofs, it almost does three quarters of this bowl, that kind of lets me know it's almost double. Then I'll put it in the fridge, and then overnight it will finish proofing. You could also just keep it on your counter or in your proofer until this doubles in size or almost double in size, and then you'll do the next stage of creating the different dough balls for the individual uh, flatbreads. So day two, we got the sourdough out of the fridge. And now what we gotta do is make some dough balls. So I like to take a little bit of flour, put it on the cutting board. Get it on my hands a little bit. Then we gotta get this onto the, it's easy if you just work around it a little bit. And then, get it onto your board. I pulled this out of the fridge about an hour ago, so it's had about an hour. And um, when it's cold too, it's actually a little bit easier to make the dough balls out of it. So I'm just gonna kind of find half. And I don't exact measure this. And then simply to make these, I just stretch them a little and fold them into themselves like that. And then I just keep working that around. It's almost like you're turning and pinching, turning and pinching, turning and pinching. And that just keeps, that's just making a little bit tighter on the outside here, as you can see. And then you're pinching that inside. Another way you can put it down and use your a dough scraper and kind of you're pushing in as you turn the dough ball. And that makes a nice little tight ball. You can, you can see it's actually still already, it's fermenting there. It's still got the little bubbles. You know, one way to tell if you haven't over proofed this is how well it bounces back. So if you push it and it pushes back out, that means we're still pretty good to go here. If it's over fermented, it'll make a dent and then uh, won't bounce back. And you kind of tell like, from experience when you start making them all the time, um, the smell. If it's too soury, then you might know that you've over fermented it. All right, the dough balls had some time to rest. They look really good. We're gonna go ahead, I'll put a little bit of flour on the cutting board again. Leave a little in this corner here in case I need it. Also get the, a burner going. You're looking at like medium high heat. You really want that oil to get as hot as possible. Um, without really burning or smoking. So I use extra virgin olive oil, a good one. Um, it gets it hot enough that it cooks it really well, but doesn't, the oil doesn't burn really fast. So we're gonna grab one of these out of the dish. And now all we're simply doing is trying to spread this out with a little more surface area to cook the flatbread. Um, if they're really tight, if you notice when you pull them out, they're really tight. What you can do is stretch them a little bit and then you leave them over in one spot for a little while and then go ahead and set up another one. And what this will do is it gives that a little more time to relax again and then you'll be able to um, stretch it even further. Now guys, what are these so good for? Like there's so many things you can make with these. After they're done cooking, you can freeze them and then pull them out as you need them and make a pizza with them or a sandwich with them or anything like your breakfast, your eggs, uh, tuna sandwich. I mean, they're just so versatile. Just putting butter on these things, they just taste amazing. If you could put your hand about an inch away and it's starting to get warm, you know you're about ready for the oil. So I'm adding like the size of a quarter perhaps. The first oil, you usually end up with a little more. It should move really loose around that pan. 
that thing's hot. We got the dough stretched as far as we want to go. And then you're simply just going to flop it in there. Hey guys, one cheat I use is this um, stainless steel lid. It's big enough to cover the entire top of this and just helps it cook a little bit faster. Is it needed? No, it's just something I've been doing. So if you have one, go ahead and use it. And then the idea is we're just letting that brown. And now while that one's in there, I'm gonna finish stretching out this one. So when that one's ready, I'm ready to go. Because the thing is, that pan is not gonna get any cooler. And you might have to watch that and turn it down as it goes. As you can see, it's bubbling up nicely. It's starting to brown. And guys, this is something you're gonna have to play with your own kitchen and your own stovetop and your own pans. This pan holds a lot of heat and retains the heat. But I know once it starts to brown on one side or the bubbles go, then I know when I'm flipping it. You're trying to shoot for that point where you're cooking it and you're not burning the oil. Um, if it's starting to smoke, you turn it down a little bit. If you have to, you can lift it off the uh, burner a little bit. Guys, if you're new to cooking, I, I built a whole course um, cooking for beginners and it goes over all kinds of awesome stuff how to build flavor. You can find the link for that in the description. All right, checking the bottom. Perfect. Give it a flip. As you can see, it's nice and brown. It's cooked really well. And then we're just gonna give it a little time on this side. So we got a nice brown on each side. We'll go ahead and we're gonna get the other one on there. Give it a flop. We got a lid, let her up. So if you're asking how long, it's till they're brown. It could be two minutes a side, could be three minutes a side, depending on how hot your heat is. These things are incredible. Let's jump in. I just want to show you. You know what, how, what makes this good? Look at that. It's still hot. And you know what you need to serve these with? Absolutely nothing. You can eat it just like this. Guys, think about it. Go in your cupboard. Look at your loaf of bread. If you're buying bread, and you can make this, and it's got flour, water, olive oil, and a little bit of salt. It's absolutely delicious. Use this on your eggs. Use this with, um, you're making spaghetti and meatballs. Have this on the side. Make it into a garlic bread. This, you can make, just think of anything you're going to make bread with, use this for. And guys, you want to see how I make my sourdough starter? Go ahead and watch this video. And uh, I want to thank you guys, and I'll see you next time on Home Cook Basics.